Hi, Carrie with Canine Do Camp Dog Training here. I'm going to talk to you today about how to use the Mini Educator, which is the collar that I highly recommend and most all my clients use. It'll come in a box, it looks similar to this. I've already opened this one, so it's a little jumbled up inside of here, but this is um, basically what your packaging looks like. Um, inside your box, you're going to have a remote, you're going to have a charger, of course, your collar. And the little bag with some odds and ends in it. Um, so, um, before you come, when you get your box, if you're ordering it on your own and bringing the collar to me, um, you can save me some time by charging the collar, which, um, if you look at the remote here on the back, there's a little flip-up um, protector here, which is a charging port. And then also on the actual collar, on the base of the collar, there's another little flip-up charging port for charging your charger and the wall obviously and then these two plug into those spots i just showed you on your collar and your receiver it's a two hour charge so it charges very quickly um, your box also has two bags in it these bags contain long contact points and handy tool and i can't find it in this one i don't know where it went i know it was there comes a little tool that you um, use. Here it is. This little tool here, a little black one, is how you um, unscrew the contact points, which are these, off of the collar. Um, it comes standard with the short contact points. The longer ones um, here in the bag are good for most dogs. I usually ask everybody to change them out and put these longer ones in. Um, and then um, they make, I'm on the, they make a long-haired dog contact points that you can order. They have different types of contact points for different types of dogs. The long hair contact points are all metal. There's no plastic on them at all, so the whole piece is metal. And those I use a lot on Great Pyrenees and Bernice Mountain Dogs and the really fluffy, thick-haired dogs. Um, but most dogs can either use these standard contact points or the long ones here in the bag. So before you bring the collar, if you can have it charged and have those long contact points in, that's very helpful. Um, so... You need to learn how to turn this remote on and off. This remote here is waterproof. Um, it can actually be submerged in water and still work. It does not float, although I'm pretty sure you can get a wrap protective covering to go on it that does float. Um, so if it'll sink, it will sink if you drop it in a lake, but um, if you drop it into a pool or a small body of water, you can retrieve it out of the water. It is safe. Um, it needs to be turned on and off when you're using it and when you're done to save your battery. So, it's, so that's the first thing I'll show you. On the back of the collar, you can see there it says on, off, and light. Um, so this button here serves two features. Um, the first one is to turn it on and off. So I'm going to put my finger on it. I'm going to turn it around. You'll see I'm going to hold the button down. And within a couple of seconds, the collar will power on, as you see there. Hold it down again, and the collar will power off, as you see there. Um, you can also use that button for the light. That's why it says on, off, and light on it. So um, if you watch me use that same button and just push it once. Oh, maybe. Oh, I turned it off. Hang on. Let me turn it back on. Okay. If you push it once, you're going to get a blinking LED light, which is a great feature at nighttime. Push it again, you're going to get a, a constant LED light. Push it again, your LED light goes off. And you have just your standard blinking light that shows you the collar is on and working. So I'm going to hold the button down and my remote's going to shut off. Okay? So on, off, and light. You also have two buttons on the side here and one button on this side. These are um, the tools that you, the buttons that you use to make the collar work. Um, now, turn the collar itself on, which is already on, so I'm going to go over here and turn it off and show you how to do it. Um, there's two little dots, one here on the side of your remote and one here on, the, on your collar next to your light. You hold these two together and the collar powers on. And you'll have a little green light that blinks about every seven seconds or so and it shows you it's on. Hold them together. It's hard to do. And your collar, it's hard to do. Will power off. It's hard to do when I'm looking in the phone. So hold them together, collar powers on. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you turn the collar, oops, on and off. Again, so you're not wasting your battery. So on before you put it onto the dog and off when you take it off of the dog. Well, that's how those work. So on and off in the back of this, and then the two dots together, paired together, held together, turn your collar on. 
So these two buttons are the ones you're going to use the most, and this red one in particular the very most. So the difference in these two, oh, I should talk about the front of the collar too. So it has a number on it, which indicates the level of the collar is on, either 1 to 100. It also has an M and a C. I don't know if you can see that on there very well or not. But M and C means that this collar will operate with two different buttons, one being momentary, one being continuous. You always want to see an M and a C on your collar. So the button that I use all the time is the red one, and I'll show you the difference. Continuous, when I hold this red button down, it gives, it works the collar until I release it. It makes the collar go until I release it. Momentary, the black, I can hold it down and it just gives a quick little momentary stimulation. You see that? So continuous, momentary. I choose to always use the red button because I can give a momentary stimula, stimula I can give a momentary stimulation just pushing and releasing. So I always try to stick with just that red button and either use it on a continuous mode or momentary mode. Okay? That's those. Now we only have to ever find one button. I hold it in my hand just like this. My finger's ready to go on the button that I need. Okay? Now, this button up here, this is your antenna. This is your dial. This changes the levels. I'm not sure if you can see it very well in here, but we're at a zero. And then we go up from there all the way up to 100. Zero to 100. The levels that you use obviously depend on the dog and the situation. Uh, we'll talk about that more in your training session, but um, you're not going to... You're not going to be stuck on a level. The level will change depending on the circumstance and, and how well the dog responds. Um, you have your strap here with lots of different holes on it. It's a very long strap. You can cut it down. I just recommend that you leave at least a good portion of extra strap to make it easy for two reasons. One, to make it easy to put on and off of the dog because if your strap is really short, it, trust me, it's a really difficult to put it on. Um, and also, <coughs> because we have a puppy and it grows, you want to be able to have extra strap. These are replaceable, as you can see. I've had clients who order hot pink ones. Um, they just zip right in through here. You just pull this whole end out. There's nothing on this end. So if you do cut too much and the dog gets too big, you can order another one. It's not a huge deal. But anyway, you want to save yourself some money. So, so I think that's everything. Um, the collar also has a boost feature. So right now we're set on a 38. And you can see that. If I hold the red button down and push the black... It boosts up to five levels, up to a 43. So I can give, let me show you, a five level up instant correction or instant boost to my correction. So if I have a dog who's I'm you know, holding the, the button down and it's just not responding and I don't want to look down and change the level with my fingers, turn the knob, then I will, um, I can boost it. You can set the boost level to go up 10, 15, 20, you have many numbers you levels you want. I honestly don't ever use the boost feature, but I know many people who do, many trainers who do. Um, I usually have the collar up higher ahead of time if I know that I'm in a situation where my dog may not listen on a normal level, like there's lots of distractions, there's a chance that something could dart out in front of him, like a squirrel or a bird or whatever, then I'm going to have the collar boosted up because I'd rather, I'm going to have it turned up. I'd rather the dog get a little bit higher stimulation out the gate than have to boost it. Um, so that's a great feature, uh, to have. So your collar box also comes with a manual. You can read through it to learn all about this particular model and all the different features. There's lots of things it does. This button on the side here, this T by itself is a vibrate button. When you push it, it just simply vibrates. Um, I honestly have never used the vibrate feature with any of my dogs. I believe there's a tone. Maybe not. I'm, I don't hear anything. Um, I've never used the vibrate feature with this collar, with any collar. Um, I know that some trainers train only with the vibrate. They never even use the stimulation. Um, I'll be honest with you. I just feel like if all my dog knows is vibrate, then when I do need to do something more than vibrate it, I'm not going to be able to because it won't know how to respond to anything more than a vibrate. Whereas um, I know that my dog's going to listen with the stimulation, whether I have to go turn it up to get to listen or not is to be, you know, that depends. But, um, I have options. When I have accidentally pushed the vibrate button on my dogs who have been trained, they freak out. Like they don't know what to do with that vibrate. They, so, um, they have to be taught and explained the difference and cause it feels different than what the stimulation feels like. So 
Um, again, the vibration is just a vibration. So if I ever got into a situation where the vibration didn't work, I would not be able just to push the stimulation button because the dog wouldn't know how to respond to it unless it had been trained on it. So therefore I don't, I don't use anything but the stimulation. I don't use the vibration button, but it's there. If you want to mess around with it and play with it and work with it, you're welcome to. So I'm going to turn my collar off. Now you can see that it's off because there's no more blinking light. I'm going to put it away. Hopefully you have had time to review this before you come. It'll save some time um, in our lesson. If you can have had some familiar, familiarity with it before we start. Thanks for watching. I'll hopefully see you soon.